Over the last seven years, I've shown you a ton of different ways in which I made my existing home smart. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I'm preparing to make our new home smart. Let's get started. As you can see, there's quite a bit more work to do, but right now is the perfect opportunity to show you what I'm doing to the home before the walls are up so that you can see how I have made it smart. Now, over the last few months, we were able to purchase this, luckily before the drywall is up, so we did have the option to come in with the electrician add a few different items, and then I was able to add a few on my own. And so I'm gonna show you all those things that are available. I've watched a ton of different YouTube videos about this topic, so I'm going to show you from my perspective what is great to add and not add before the walls are up in your home. Let's start off by talking about lighting. So they already had all the different items laid out on where they wanted it to be. And we did give some recommendations on what we wanted here. We wanted all these to match and line up. So making sure that you're clear on what you want. Over here on the stairs, they gave us the option to put in different little night lights that we could turn on. But I think each one of those was about $250. So we went with the option of just adding an outlet, which each outlet was an extra 150 bucks so that we could add a nightlight later. Now coming up here, we have a little loft and a playroom. And in this closet, I thought, oh, this might be a place where we're going to be putting our Nintendo Switch controllers and different things. So I had them add an outlet right in the closet so that we can then plug in items and they are out of the way. Now with each of the bedrooms that we had in this house, they just had a standard light. And we had the option to upgrade to a fan rated box as well as a basic fan. I've now replaced every fan in our current home with that, so I decided why not do it right from the beginning and get the fan rated box in there. And the good news about that is it brings a 14.3 wire down here. So that gives me a switch for the light on the fan and a switch for the fan itself. So then I can make those switches smart and have full control of the room without needing to use a remote or anything like that, which I'm really excited for. Now, as we're going around here, you'll see a bunch of different outlets. And here I have some Cat6 Ethernet ports. Now, each one of these that they added was $85, but it's nice that they were able to run all those cables before the insulation or anything was in, especially in the attic. So that was super nice. And then I came back and ended up adding one here um, for the loft where we can have the kids use a computer or whatever. So I did wire each room with a Cat6 Ethernet cable for future if we have a computer or game consoles or whatever it is inside those rooms. And coming in here into the loft, um, the first thing I wanna show you is up here in the middle of the main room here and even up above our main living space there, I added a wireless access point. So this is where we have a Cat6 cable going all the way down into the network room and then we'll be able to plug in a uh, point where it's then going to broadcast internet to this room. So I could put a few of those throughout the house, but the plan is to just have one in the basement and one up here so that everyone in this room will have quick access to the Wi-Fi. Now over here, I plan to have a TV for the kids. So is what they would do is they would run a outlet to where the TV would be mounted and then they have a Smurf tube here that goes down so that you can easily have your HDMI's and everything route from your entertainment center with your Nintendo Switch or your Xbox all the way up to behind the TV. Now they also put an outlet here and then here is where we can run the Smurf tube and here they're going to put a little uh, outlet cover that has ethernet as well as a coaxial cable for TV. So I like that we have all of those options right there. And then I can hide all the cables in the wall. If you just put a hole like this in a wall and feed an extension cable or a power cable through it, that is actually not allowed. You need to make sure that you have an outlet up here next to the box um, that is up to code. So that's going to be perfect for adding our TV up here, playing games and everything like that. So up here in the attic, you can see all the different Cat6 cable that is going down over to the network room. But one thing when running these, you do wanna make sure that you are running them away from the Romex cable here, because if you run them along, there could be different interference. So it would have been nice if they used a different route. 
So when you're doing yours, make sure you do that. So here you can see I used a staple gun to put some staples up to get it a little further away from the electrical. And there my run comes down and it goes in just like that, it goes down and out. So that will be easy to pull through and I have plenty of cable to use later. And so here all the network cable comes to and it is running down all the way through the four. Now, one thing I would have liked to add is another Smurf tube that's going all the way from the attic down into the network room so that later I could come back and add more Cat6 cables as I want. But just the way this is laid out, it was pretty difficult to add. I might have some time to do it, but once the electrical's in and you see the insulation, you only have a matter of days before the drywall could pop up. So the best time to do this is once the electrical is done and before the insulation is in. Now here you'll notice these other cables around the house. So this is actually a CL3 cable, I believe. And this is for each window in the home. So I had the electricians come through and I had them wire every single window in this house so that it can be compatible with the Serena shades by Lutron, which then I have the option to add smart shades or blinds to each window. So as how this works is we have the cable here. I think it needs to go about half of the window and then have it come in on the left side of the window. And then that is going to be routed all the way down into an electrical box down into the basement. Now I'm going to make an additional video about all the steps for wiring Serena shades, but uh, I'll show you some more of what is going to be done down by the electrical panel. So there we have one of these in every single window and I'm really excited about this because having smart shades has been one of my favorite things that a smart home can do. Now over here we do have these smaller windows. I decided not to put them on there um, as they're so small. And then um, we have quite a few windows and you can have 10 windows per panel. So we'll have pretty much maxed out two panels already. Now next here, we just have a typical thermostat. I just wanted to know where those are because I will be putting on a smart thermostat. So we will have a dual unit in this home. So that will be kind of fun to play with. Now another thing I did check is whenever there was a light, I made sure that uh, if there was a three-way, so if there's two light switches or three-way light switches, that those were all in the right place. So later down the road, when I add smart switches to this, I already know where everything is going to be. And um, of course, this is all new wiring. So we have a nice neutral wire bundle back there in the back. So these will all be compatible with smart switches. All right, let's head down to the kitchen. And here we are in the kitchen. <laughs> Doesn't look like much of a kitchen right now, but it will. So over here, we have our stove and some cabinets. We have an island with the sink. And then here we will have our refrigerator with some cabinets as well. Now, one thing that I've really wanted forever was LED lighting underneath the cabinets. So I did pay the extra to be able to do that. And let me show you how they ran that. So over here, we have that same type of cable uh, that they ran the windows to. So here's going to be one run of the LED strips. Then that cable goes up and it goes over all the way down here where this is going to be where all of them are linked together and powered. Then we have the next strip that goes up and over. And let's see, it comes out. There's a microwave right there. It comes out right here. So then they'll be able to tie that in. And then we had the third cable that goes up all the way over and down. And then here will be the third run um, that attaches the three different cabinet sections together with all the under cabinet LED light strips. So I'm very excited about that, excited to make them smart. So this is going to be the light switch that controls it. There you can see it goes all the way up and all the way back coming down to here. So right here, this is going to be the light switch that is able to control that. So one thing I can do is add a motion sensor switch right there to be able to automatically turn them on and off when we come into the kitchen, or I can put a smart switch and a motion sensor somewhere in the room where those will automatically be turned on. Then we have all our candle lights up here and they will be adding some pendant lights over the 
island as well. Pretty excited about those. Now, one more item I have added here in the kitchen, um, all credit goes to Mr. Bristow, my dad, is right here we have the cabinets that are going to um, the bottom of the cabinets right there, but we ended up adding an outlet right inside the cabinets there you can see they marked it in the cabinets and is what my dad uses this for is the bottom cabinet right here he uses it as a little charging station so this is where we can easily plug in the ipads or we can plug in a charger for our phone so that they're not sitting on the counter all the time or something like that so i'm really excited about that can't wait to show you the final results on that but thanks dad super smart idea so that we can keep those devices out of the way and keep them charged so the kids stay happy. So that is the kitchen. So again, there's our low voltage for the shades there. Now here we have the back window. I didn't actually ask them to put one here, but they did. So I need to find what to do there. Should I have a big shade that comes down and up so that it completely covers the window? Or is there another option where I have some vertical shades that I could put on that? Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for that. So then going into this room, we have these giant windows and for privacy, we have also added the smart shade electrical. And I think they charged me $85 a run for that as well. Now over here we have a fireplace and they again did an outlet as well as the Smurf tube on the fireplace and that all runs down to here. Possibly, we might possibly have some cabinets here so that will all be hidden one day, but now we have the option to easily run that. Now the trick to getting a wire from down here to up there is to get a little string, put some electrical tape on the end, use a vacuum on one end, and you can easily pull that through, tie on your cable, and then pull it through. And I really like how big this Smurf tube is. That will be super easy to get a lot of cables through very easily. So those are some of the things that we have added to the main floor. Now let's head in here into the laundry room. One thing I'm really trying to decide, maybe I'll come and do it, is adding a second outlet down on the bottom, possibly for a robot mop or vacuum. Having an outlet right there would be super nice and clean. We also added a fan here in the laundry room to remove any moisture, so I'm pretty excited for that. All right, one thing I forgot to show you is over here, when we enter in the garage, I also added a ethernet cable back here for the possibility of adding a PoE or power over ethernet wall control panel. So putting a tablet on the wall, it gets power from the ethernet cat six cable. And then when I'm leaving the home and going to the garage, I can easily turn off all the lights or anything like that right from this panel. So I haven't made a video about that. There's quite a few out there which are pretty cool, but I will hopefully be adding that as well. Well, now let's head into the bedroom. All right, so here in the bedroom, one of the things I did was I mapped out where the bed was going to be and where our nightstands and everything were going to be. And I actually had them move the outlet box over so that it wouldn't be um, wires strung all over the floor and such. But I also had them add dual outlets behind the bed because I have a smartphone that I need to charge, I have a Google Nest Hub, then I have a smart bed, and I have a lamp. So I need to be able to plug all those things in, and having a dual outlet on each side was the best way to do that without having to add a power strip. Now I've also heard just add a power strip because that adds surge protection to your devices, but I kind of like having just the four there. Again, these will be wired um, and actually this is where i'd probably put blinds so far the other ones i'll put shades because those are able to fully lift up so that there is nothing in the way now over here we're planning to put a tv here i actually had to wire the outlet here for the tv and then again smurf tube going down to the bottom so that we can then put up any hdmi or whatever cables we need to do and uh, here they put a coaxial and cat six I ended up adding a second Cat6. Now, a lot of the videos I've seen here about pre-wiring your home for a smart home, they are adding two to three cables, Cat6 cables behind every TV. Now, I would even say that's overkill in some ways, but one of the things I did learn 
is that you can use the Cat6 cable to feed audio for a sound system. So I was like really interested in that. I decided we're gonna try that out for this room. So here I'm excited that we do have those two ethernet cables. I think that will come in handy. Now, if you really want to um, be future-proof, I guess you can add a Cat6A for video or add two of those for video, but um, I would say sometimes less is more, but also, have you ever complained about wiring too many things? I, my brother brought that up. I don't think that's possible. So because we do have that extra cable, I thought, hey, why don't we try out this Cat6 audio system? So as what I've done here is I've also wired a full 5.1.2 sound system. So we're gonna have center speaker right here. We're gonna have our left speaker right over on the side of the TV, our right speaker on the side of the TV. And then coming around to the back here, you can see that we have wired for a back right speaker, and then we're wired for a back left. And then down here, I decided, let's put the subwoofer under the bed, why not? So I've wired that as well. Um, I think I need to get an RCA cable for that, so uh, we'll need to do that. And then up here, I also wired up some Atmos speakers. So I, I saw this idea on a few of the other videos, here on YouTube about putting the cable back and forth so you can see it kind of going back and forth so that when I do eventually drill my holes in for those because I don't know when I'm going to put in that system they will be easy to find and I have a lot of extra cable if I decide to move it anywhere later down the road. So that's kind of all that we've done here in the bedroom. Uh, another thing I added a outlet in the closet there wasn't any in there and then oh look my tape measure. Now when doing things like this where I'm not actually installing it now, one good idea is to get your tape measure, which I just found, and kind of show on video the tape where you have things um, versus the side of the wall versus the floor so that you can easily reference it back. And one of the things I also did was add those videos into a Google Photos album called um, Pre-Wire so that I could then quickly reference those so that I can see where everything is when I need it down the road. So let me go ahead and take you out to the garage. Out here in the garage, one of the main things is I wanted to add a camera. So I ended up putting a PoE or Cat6 cable up there so that I can then connect a camera to there and look over the whole garage. Now, while we were walking through, added a few outlets in here, but they also had the option to, if I wanted a 15 amp outlet, or if I wanted a 20 amp outlet. So over here, we decided to do a 20 amp, um, just in case if I'm using any power tools or compressors or fridge or anything like that, that would be nice to have. And then coming up to the front here, now at the front, I did decide to add a 240 volt 50 amp outlet here in case we ever do get a electric car. Don't have one yet, but I may have one pre-ordered, we'll see. And uh, so I decided to put that in now just because it's gonna be way less due to that before all the walls are up and everything. So I'm really glad that I did that. Now let's go ahead and walk around the house. We added a few different can lights to the face of the home so that we can then easily turn those lights on. I'm planning to put some smart lights in there to uh, add some color. Then next up here, on e every corner or eve of the house, I ended up putting a PoE cable for cameras so that I can have the whole house surrounded in cameras. And then we also added outlets to the eaves so that I can then control those from a switch inside so that I can then easily turn on and off the Christmas lights. So I'll just put a smart uh, light switch on that and the Christmas lights can then automatically turn on and off. So I actually did one on that eve, one on this eve, and uh, one right by the porch. So in case I have anything on the front of the lawn that needs to be plugged in, it will be able to light up with that switch as well. Now here on the back of the house, you can see two more PoE ports for cameras. So one is able to see the backyard, one is able to see the side yard. Then next I decided to add some different locations for floodlights so that we can light up the backyard for the kids. So here we added one, one here, and one more here. So I think that should be sufficient to light up the backyard. And again, more PoE camera locations. 
And here on the side of the house, this is where the main coaxial comes in. And then I also have Cat6 going down to the network room. So I guess some companies put the modem out here and then you could wire it in. Hopefully I can get the fiber wired all the way in the home when that happens. Uh, but let's head down to the network room. So then down here in the basement, you can see where all the low voltage lines are coming through, the Cat6 coaxial, as well as the shades and blinds. Then they come down here and they're strung up away from the electrical, which is great to see. And then all of this leads into the mechanical room. So here we have the furnace, and there we have all the electrical coming in to the panel. And then next to the panel, we have all our ethernet and coaxial coming into this patch panel. I'm not sure if there's enough uh, spots there for all the networking that we have done here. So um, I'll make some future videos on how I'm going to finish that up. But then next to it, this is where we have all of the window uh, cables coming through. So again, I said Lutron has 10 spots per each panel. Um, and just quick note about that, Lutron does not sell these. You can't buy them on their website unless you call them first so that they can verify you're not going to wire these directly in to high voltage or you know, 120 volts. They, there is a 12 volt panel and these are tied into the Lutron panel, which gives it the appro appropriate voltage so that we can then have the blinds and shades wired appropriately so that I no longer have to use batteries. So then over here on the other side, this is where we have some other network cables coming in. I think I'm gonna have my um, network rack right here. So we'll have to patch those over to here. But then this is where I have all of the wiring from the bedroom coming in for the sound system. I'm gonna have the receiver down here and everything, so we don't need that box in the bedroom, so that I can then tie this into my receiver, and then we'll be able to have some awesome sound without having all the extra receiver and everything in the way. And so that is how we have everything wired into the home. I can't wait to get these all set up. So there you go, that is everything I have pre-wired in our new smart home to make sure this is the smartest house possible. Now a few things to mention, um, every time I wanted to add a new thing, it was like, oh, that's another cost, another cost. So it is going to be a little costly. Uh, it is a little bit cheaper to do it on your own, but also time could get in the way, so it might just be easier to pay them. They're efficient, they know what they're doing, that worked really well. Another tip I have about this process is I actually use my Insta360 one uh, X2 to go through and walk through the house and record all the wiring so that I can go back at any time and see that. And one thing I wish I would have done is kind of like walked right up against each wall so that I can have a 360 degree view of all the wires in the home. And that's what is great about this camera. So I do have that, which is really cool. And then again, make lots of notes about where you put everything. So I think I'm ready to order some shades once the drywall goes in. That's gonna be the next step. Very excited about that. If you do have any further questions about this process, please let me know in the comments below or recommendations. I'm open for that. And if you wanna see the full build out of this home, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one.